40, starting off with the school shear CFTC report. There was a bit of a swing in the euro again, so last week we saw net long starting to add again, despite an aggressive fall in euro USD. So we saw positioning back up about 27, shy of 28 billion. However, shorts added as well. That brings up the open interest to a level we haven't seen for most of September. Which makes it quite interesting. It creates a little bit more volatility in the pair. Regarding how we'll be going forward, the additional adding of long positions in EURUSD after a drop towards the 116, 117 level, that will show its face towards the end of the end of the week and start of October where it's a new quarter if those positions will hold or not. So far the story has been that the Fed is sitting tight and not doing anything more so the kind of divergence between the two central banks has disappeared. There's also diffusion where in the CPI in the United States or the inflation is having a bigger impact where opposed to in the Europe it's starting to deflate and go into negative territory that tends to keep the United States dollar bit against the euro that's the economic side on the on the political side we have elections looming and from the research I've done it shows that USD should f find a bit going into the elections pound we've seen net shorts a little bit adding and longs but more or less it's uh, in a sense uh, quite a neutral and balanced pace there seems to be a lot of risk surrounding the brexit negotiations um, i've read that the budget is set to be based on a no deal and looks like pound has not priced in any of those risks however there was a gap at about 130 to 80 in gbusd and that that tends to create a sort of a mental barrier to short before that gap is filled. There's a two-sided risk for the pound currently going on. On the commodity currencies, NZD were pretty neutral and Australian dollar, the longs continue to build up despite rate cut bets coming in. Danske research shows that bond flows showing significant um, cash flows, a lot of supply hitting the market for this month. So this week we have about shy of nine billion of negative cash flow. But aggregate for for October, we're putting very very aggressively long. That tends to pressure euro, specifically euro JPY on the downside when there's a lot of supply hitting the market. That's something to keep in mind. Having a look at the treasury real yields, I've inverted the charts. So it's real yields inverted. We have a look at that because it does give us an idea where gold should be trading. I'm going to change the color to make it a little bit more coherent. So gold and real yield tend to move really strongly together. Gold is also used as a hedge against inflation and as inflation has been topping off, gold found a leg lower with USD getting stronger too. Now it looks like gold has dropped further than real yields did. That that could mean that gold should find some sort of a support but the bullish case for gold right now is on the back burner as long as the top holds in real yields and it doesn't look like yields real yields will be picking up um, as a mechanism just to quickly explain real yields is the expression of the market and how they see yields in, in terms with the inflation as well and the Fed has uh, put out the projections in the last couple of weeks explaining how the future outlook looks like about inflation and it's well below 2% hardly comes close to it and that caused the rotation in real yields and also gold to fall off as the attractiveness of holding gold kinda as a protection against rising inflation has dissipated so again the bullish case for gold for now is down and out we might see some rage bound a little bit of of a bounce to as it went a bit too far too fast apart from that new highs in gold right now it's really difficult to imagine this is the five years inflation 
contract uh, what we're looking at in here again as well since the fed put out the projections um, inflation expectation have dropped however in the near term they bounced a little bit I tend to compare this with commodity currencies as they are really closely tracking these for instance the Canadian dollar again Canadian dollar seem to have dropped a little bit further what the inflation expectations are and there is reason to expect Canadian dollar to pick up to realign itself with the with the correlation for the next week we have um, very interesting data points and we also have um, political risks starting off on Monday is, is pretty it's a, it's a pretty easy start on Monday there's not a lot of data coming through China's on holiday as well but moving into Tuesday we have euro CPI coming through which would be uh, would be in the in focus so we're having a look at that how the market reacts ideally we like to sell euro cat going into german cpi as there is starting to build a bit of a differential over the bank of canada is is sitting tight the, the neutral ecb is starting to get very aggressively dovish that tends to create downward pressure on EuroCAD. So I'm looking to express a, a, a short around using using the CPI report as a catalyst on the chart. I've got a, you know, Euro Canada marked out here and looking for that for that area to establish a sell order. Moving on on Tuesday, we've got a very important uh, televised political debate, which is Trump against Biden. It will be the first um, debate online and televised. What we'll be looking at at that is to see what the what the outcome is and how strongly Biden is keeping up in the debate. There will there will start swinging the polls around and we start to see trends emerge out of that as market gets really aggress aggressively positioned and very volatile around these polls. We should see some pretty strong price action moving into Wednesday which is the last day of the quarter and the last day of the month as well so the, the london fix is going to become much more interesting around those days where you find that um, portfolio rebalancing is seem to be in favor of euro against against dollar but it would be only the, the hour before and after surrounding the london fixes which is 4 p.m uk time that's something to keep an eye out specifically if you're buying or selling currencies that are affected by the fixes you can use those as catalysts to enter or exit the trades for Wednesday we have final GDP numbers from the United States which tends to which tends to create a bullishness for equities after the event is due same thing for um, GDP for Canada we're both looking at pretty good numbers a little bit um, on the upside reflation trade has been seeping through specifically in q3 so i like canadian dollar to show some muscle specifically against euro on thursday we have important data point for the united states which is the ISA manufacturing pmi it tends to be a strong mover for usd jpy usd jpy recently dipped under 105 and started moving above that level and it remains to be seen that that level can be hold. I think a lot of sentiment will start to establish once we are out of the first televised debate. So on Wednesday we have a better understanding of how we want to trade. But by the looks of the US eyes, and manufacturing is coming in stronger, and that should tend to that should tend to create a bullish bullish follow through on USD JPY to hopefully break to break the upside around 106. Going to Friday, we have NFP. Focus is now less on that the jobs number, the unemployment rate is dropping. The focus is on the rate it is dropping. So we're really looking to see if we can get a good, strong jobs number and then get the rate below from what the expectations are. Again, if I show you the trend here, the actual numbers, job creations was big and then it kept falling off and the focus is starting to shift towards that. Uh, the trend of uh, unemployment or employment gate seems to be 
uh, the growth seems to be waning off. So focus will be on the job creation a lot to understand that how well or how fast the United States can bring its unemployment down. That will have a direct impact on the Canadian dollar too. So a stronger job report should really help Canadian dollar. Last but not least, we have on Friday we have Australian retail sales. And Australian retail sales is not always a huge market mover, but will be one of the last most important data points before the RBA meets the following week. And the thinking is that the RBA will start to cut rates very soon. So there would be a catalyst to start positioning short Australian dollar, ideally against Canadian dollar, to start moving towards the 92 level. That's awful week number 40.